Hello and welcome to Twin Creeks Farm. If you enjoy this content, please like and subscribe. And if you want to stay notified of future videos, if you ring the little bell, you'll get notifications when we upload. Today we're going to talk about the cost of raising bottle calves and is it worth it? And maybe some pointers about how we do things here. There are lots of different ways that people will raise bottle calves, but so far this is what we've found to work the best. Went to the sale barn today and uh, didn't know if I was going to really be picking anything up but the price on Angus Holstein crosses was down a fair bit from a few weeks ago so we ended up being able to pick up a couple for a pretty good price and we have a little extra milk right now so I figured we'd make a go of it and we'll just keep a close eye on, on them and we'll keep them in a couple hutches that we got just to keep them separate from all the calves just with the extra risk of disease and everything coming through the sail barn. Here's the new uh, new hutches that we got. Well, they're not new, they're definitely used. Uh, we just got a really good price on them. So, that's, they're not in great shape, but they'll do the job and we'll do a little bit of work on them to get them so that they hold up for a while until we can get some better ones. So let's say hello. She got uh, one heifer and one bull. A couple of 85 pound calves. So we go, got them both tied onto their hutches. Got this little uh, heifer calf. And then the little steer. Well, he's a bull. He will be a steer. The, uh, normally you'd space them out a little more to help kind of, if one of them's sick, keep it away from the other. At this point, I kind of figure they've spent the better part of a day together so and that's actually expect they came from the same farm so I'm, I'm I'm already banking on having to treat both of them if I have to treat one of them but we'll probably give them a little bit of preventative electrolytes to begin with just to give them a bit of a head start but First thing will be now is feed them for supper time and see how they do. I'm not sure if they'll have been fed with a bottle or a bucket, but we'll figure that out fairly quickly. Calves in their instinct to go underneath the legs. <laughs> We're just bucket training the two new calves. You kind of have to get them start it on your fingers and then you slowly lower your fingers into the bucket so they start sucking milk and eventually they just learn to drink out of the bucket with just to drink the milk out of the bucket so but I'd say they're both doing pretty well I think this one's got its leg around its lead Still young and clumsy. Nothing coming from there, Betty. Good job. Don't run up there. They both did pretty well. The Angus are hey. Angus and Holsteins I think are pretty good for taking to feed. Can you do it by yourself? When the Charlay calves come in. 
Charlay and Brown Swiss, and I don't know what else, are known for being very stubborn to try and reteach to take feed. See there, he's learning already that just to go into the bottom of the bucket for milk. This is their third feeding here, and they're already pretty good at getting to the bucket. It's, they're pretty quick catching on when they want to. So for us, the first cost is the calves. Uh, we get most of ours from a local farmer, um, a local dairy. Uh, we get them for 65 bucks a calf, and they. Sorry, I'm just getting swarmed by calves. They're uh, 65 a calf. They're all Holstein bull calves, and uh, they come with the. They, they're given the first defense bolus. We're pretty happy getting the calves from them. They seem to come in and do really well, and they have them pale trained, which is. A lot easier for us than the bottles. Um, we'll try to transition them off a bottle if we can, but some of them are pretty stubborn. And when we have the opportunity, um, sometimes there will be a beef drop calf that just for whatever reason, maybe the mother died or she didn't have enough milk for the calf or whatever, but every now and then a beef calf will become available and you're paying more for those calves, like this one, this little heifer, but uh, we'll try to pick them up because the upside on them is better than on the Holstein calves. And then our next cost is the uh, milk for the calves. The uh, We, you can either do milk replacer or uh, what we do is we milk the cows. When we did milk replacer, I found that we used a little over a couple bags of milk replacer per calf, uh, which ended up having a cost a little over 150, maybe 175 bucks. Uh, with these cows, uh, I find that Doing the math, I figure if we raise about 75 calves off of our four Holsteins in a year, uh, that it'll cost us about 150 bucks to feed these calves to produce that milk. So you'd probably say, why is it, why you go through that much work to do it? And I guess for me, it's preference. Um, I don't really find it to be much more than. Uh, Mixing up milk replacer and we get the fertilizer out of the back end of the cow. And what we're actually the plan to do is to put some uh, purebred char embryos into these cows. So then we're we're getting some purebred char calves out of that as well. So then the next cost is uh, feed all the different grain that they'll eat during their lifetime. If we're finishing these steers up to 1150 pounds, then uh, we're looking at about two and a half ton of corn, which will cost us about 500 bucks. On top of that, they'll eat a protein supplement that'll cost another $300. And then during the weaning process between milk and when they're on that, uh, high corn diet, they'll eat another $50 in calf starter. On top of that, I figure we've got about $25 average between putting your ear tags, getting them the bands for castrating and dehorning, uh, if they need electrolytes or a little bit of medication. Um, and then on top of that, probably another 15 to 20 bucks for utilities. Each calf will probably need two bales to bed it up until weaning. So there's another $8. And then we just have a hundred bucks miscellaneous for whatever needs arise and kind of replacing things as they break. 
pockets and new nipples for bottles and all that. I told all that I come to 1228 is the cost to raise one of those bottle calves, including the cost of the calf, up to about 1150 pounds, which is about 14 months. Um, at 1150 pounds, we should have a carcass weight that is about a 58% um, carcass weight on a Holstein. So we're looking at a, about a 667 pound carcass. And then if you're at a 60%, if you're looking at about 60% meat off that, then we're about 400 pounds of meat from a 1150 pound Holstein steer. Around here, a lot of farmers are selling beef. If you're buying a whole beef or a side or a quarter for, I think they're selling generally five bucks a pound is what a lot of them are doing. Um, so if you're looking at that, you're at about $2,000 is the value if you're selling it that way. If we say that our inputs are 1,228, um, and then we probably want to figure on about a 5% mortality rate, just for whatever reason. Uh, it's probably safe to have a little bit of a buffer like that. Then we're looking at $1,293 um, is what we have to count on each Holstein steer costing us to get up to that weight. So we'll say about $1,300 is what each steer costs us to raise. And then when we take it to get butchered, slaughtered and butchered, the fees there are probably another six, six fifty. So by the time it's all said and done, you're about nineteen fifty into each animal. Um, and if you think you got a four hundred pound, you got a four hundred pound carcass. Um, if you're selling it for five bucks a pound, two two thousand bucks, so you're only you only got about fifty bucks to play with there. So if you're gonna make money at it, you probably don't want to be selling it by the uh, by the side. Um, so the beef will start at around here. You get ground beef from a farmer. You're probably paying five bucks a pound, but then all your other cuts from there. Most of your other cuts from there are worth more than that. So if you got the freezer space and you can take a little time and uh, sell, sell it by the cut, then you can actually, you know, you can make that uh, that 2,000 pound carcass or $2,000 carcass worth um, 2,500, 3,000 bucks. We grow our own hay, so uh, when we talk about that figure, we're like we're paying ourselves for that, so we're making the money on the hay. Uh, we don't grow any corn at the moment, um, but it's something that if we're going to continue with this, we're going to look at doing. That way, when it comes to our corn costs, then we're we're paying ourselves for the corn, so we're making the money on the corn in there, um, and then. For the protein, uh, we need to look at. For the protein, we need to look at uh, some alternatives. Like, then if you're looking to raise into 1,250 pounds, I figure it probably costs another 150 bucks. If you raise in that extra 100 pounds, you'll end up with about another 35 pounds of meat. So you're looking at an additional 450 a pound. And then I figure if you want to take them to 1,350 pounds. Uh, those additional pounds for the extra 35 pounds of meat you'll get there, uh, I figure costs you about 525 a pound. So then it becomes not really worth it as much. There's a lot more risk of not making money on those extra pounds. And if I add up the cost to uh, raise a red veal, which is about eight months old, eight or nine months old. Um, I figure it costs about, if you include the 5% mortality, $782 to raise them to that age. Um, 
you know, best case scenario, scenario, you're getting a buck thirty a pound live weight for that, so it's worth eight forty five. Uh, but during COVID, you see in prices around eighty cents a pound, so you're only getting five hundred and twenty bucks for uh, for about a six hundred and fifty pound uh, Holstein steer. So you're you know you're losing two hundred and fifty bucks at that price. So I don't. Uh, I don't see any value in, in raising the red veal like that. It's not really something we're interested in anyways. And then there are some people that are interested in just raising bottle calves and uh, selling them. And if I do the math on our inputs to get them to two months of age, um, I think we're spending about 295 we'll say $300 to get them to that age. And you, I mean, you can buy them for less than that. Uh, if, if you can find them, if you can find them, you can buy them for less than that typically, which is something that we'll, we'll look at doing. I do like raising my own bottle calves because then they're started the way that I want them and we're already at the weaning process. We're already transitioning them to our, our growing ration the way that we want to. Um, so it's just a little more seamless that way. But in terms of raising bottle calves and selling bottle calves, there's there's no money in it. And there are guys that'll uh, limit their inputs a little more than we do. Uh, there are guys that'll wean at five or six weeks, um, which to me seems a little early. Uh, we'll generally start at about eight and try to have them weaned by the ten week mark. I know the kind of rule of thumb is once they'll eat a couple pounds of uh, grain a day then you can start weaning and once they're at five pounds that uh, they're ready to be done with milk uh, but we'd like to let them have the eight weeks anyways one of the things that we're investing in to um, to manage our calves better and to uh, improve our margins is we're trying to pick up cheap hutches used hutches when we can um, this should reduce the amount of uh, treatment that calves need um, with fewer respiratory issues with being in a better ventilated area and we spend a pile of money on feed mixes so um, we're looking at alternatives looking at maybe mixing some of our own mixes to help reduce our input costs and then in terms of our cows we have to look at uh, if it'd be more economical to put more we have to look at if it'd be more economical to put uh, more supplements into quit licking me more supplements into these cows uh, or if we're better off to I uh, use fewer supplements and more cows to reach our milk production targets.